Welcome, Weirdos. I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness. Here you'll find stories of the paranormal, supernatural, legends, lore, the strange and bizarre, crime, conspiracy, mysterious, macabre, unsolved, and unexplained. Well, that's what you would normally hear if this was a normal episode, but this is a Chamber of Comments episode where I dive into all of the emails that I've been sent recently, as well as the messages that have been sent to me by my patrons, and I, well, I reply to them. You can, or I respond to them, that is. I have, I, sometimes I do reply to them, but I respond here. Uh, if you'd like to, you can email me anytime at darren at weirddarkness.com. Darren is D-A-R-R-E-N, and if you're listening and you are a patron, well, you know you can just send me a message there and I will definitely uh, get to it. So we've actually had a lot of emails coming in regarding the Weird Darkness SUV. In our last chamber of comments, I talked about the fact that we need a name for it. I was calling it the Weird Darkness Machine for a while, which I still like, but I realized, eh, you know what, there might be something better out there. And I had a couple of people say, hey, I like your vehicle, have you considered calling it such and such? And suddenly it just became a thing. So. I ended up reading a lot of emails in my last chamber of comments with suggestions for names, and well, it's that way again today. So it's not all SUV naming, but most all of these emails, even if it's not specifically about the SUV, it still touches on it. So we'll begin with uh, Justin. He uh, sent me an email saying, Hi Darren, just a quick thought about naming uh, the new ride. How about the Weird TARDIS? You have Doctor Who on that side of the pond, don't you? Love the show over here in the UK. All the best. Signed, Justin. We do have uh, Doctor Who over here, yes. I, I've not really been a fan of the show. Uh, not that I don't, don't think it's worthy of watching, I just never really got into it. But yes, it is out here and boy do we have some big Doctor Who fans over here. Uh, one of my patrons, uh, Janine, sent me Weird Darkness Wagon, or WDW. And I believe that's something we actually had in our previous Chamber of Comments, the Weird Darkness Wagon. Also, Weirdo Wagon uh, ended up in that. I got another email from Yang Yang saying, Hello, Darren. May I suggest the name of Darkness Roamer? Jamie sent me an email saying, Hi, Darren. I've been listening to your podcast for about two months now, thanks to an ad on Crime Junkie. I finished all the episodes on there. Now all I do is try to catch up on your show. 10 hours at work, 60 hours a week. I even listen to you on my drive home. Anyways, I wanted to uh, I wanted to let you know that I wanted to to Oh, I, okay, I'm sorry. Anyway, I wanted to tell you I love your show. Awesome job. I am a Gen X child and my suggestion on the name is this. Number 1, The Weird Darkness Mystery Machine, and number 2, The Weirdo Mystery Machine. I think you should get the reference. <laughs> Once again, love the show and you got this. I know you'll win those two awards. Sincerely, Jamie. Thank you very much, Jamie. She, uh, the rewards she's referring to are the podcast awards that come out every year that I was asking you to vote for throughout the month of July. And I did, by the way, let you know, I, I think I told you in the last Chamber of Comments, but just in case I didn't, of the three categories that I was nominated for, I did become a finalist in two of them. I did not become a finalist in the People's Choice Award, but I still am a finalist in the True Crime Podcasts and the Storyteller Drama Podcasts. So now all of the finalists go towards the next round of voting. And from the five million some votes that came in for all of the podcasts, they chose 20,000 people to vote on the finals. So, And we will get the information on that. Uh, the results, that is, on September 30th. That's International Podcast Day. I think I said National Podcast Day in my previous Chamber of Comments. It's actually International Podcast Day. And that's the day that they announce the winners. So we won't know anything until then. And if, if you're wondering, yes, I am chewing my nails wait, waiting for an answer. Uh, thank you very much for the email, Jamie. It's odd uh, that, I, that you heard about me on Crime Junkie. That is, that's really strange. Uh, I've not talked to those guys. Uh, we didn't come up with a deal like to to trade promos with each other or anything. That that's really that's really interesting. But I'm I'm glad that you heard it over there though. That's cool. Uh, moving on to Rashawn sending me an email saying, "Hi Darren, my name is Rashawn and I've been a fan of the podcast since the first episode I heard. I've 
I've even listened to every episode that Pandora allows, which is over a thousand episodes. I had a name idea for your new vehicle, which is the Vanishing Hitchhiker, because you'll be taking it around the country, and you'll see it one second and it'll be gone the next. Thanks for everything you do, and I can't wait for every new episode that comes out now that I actually have to wait. Thank you, uh, Rashawn, appreciate that. Another one of my patrons, Ben, sent me a message saying, Kind of surreal to be able to speak to someone whose voice pumps out through my car's speakers on a daily basis. Anyway, just listened to the episode discussing names for the new car. I personally like Dark Rider. You want something that you can refer to quickly by name. Batman had the Batmobile, I have a Tesla named the Enforcer, so when I'm speaking with my wife or kids and they ask which car we're taking, it's easy to say the Enforcer. I guess the weird wagon rolls off the tongue also, but the Dark Rider, man, that's a statement. Sorry for the long message. Love the show. TD sent me an email. Hello, Darren. Been listening for a while and love all the work. I'll be voting for you in the final cut for the podcast awards. Oh, nice. TD. So you became, you're one of those 20,000? Interesting. All right. Uh, anyway, continuing on with the email. A couple of names for the automobile. Darkness Express and the Weirdos Express. Anyway, keep up the good work. Be safe. Thank you, TD. Appreciate that. Michelle sent an email, Weird Darkness Ghoulish Mystery Machine. Weird Darkness Ghoulish Mystery Machine. Or Weird Darkness Mystery Investigator. I love your show and I'm so happy your podcast made it to the finals. I'm hoping you win. Thank you for all your wonderful tales. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that very much. I really do. Joe sent an email. The, hey, Darren, my name is Joe from Florida. If you've not named the SUV yet, I was thinking maybe the Weird Wagon or maybe the Dark Cart. Anyway, I love the podcast and appreciate all you do. Keep up the good work. So, are you seeing a theme here with all of the names? A lot of them are coming up with the weird wagon type of thing. Michelle said, Weird Darkness Horror Finder. Hmm, not too bad. Jonathan, I loved Jonathan's email because not only did he send a suggestion, he sent a picture with it. I think I'm going to have to post this on to the website so y'all so can see it. But Jonathan said, hey, Darren, I hear you're still looking for a name for the truck. Surprised I didn't hear this one. The Weirdo Machine. Also a perfect theme song for the road trip. Darren Marler, where are you? We got some stories to voice now. Darren Marler, where are you? We need to hear the, ma we, <laughs> we need to hear the macabre now. All right, obviously I, I didn't get the timing on that. Uh, all right, that's all I have. Um, wasted enough time at work. Thanks, signed. Jonathan, and what he did is he actually created a photo of the, the, the old Scooby-Doo mystery machine. He renamed it the Weirdo Machine, and then he put uh, the cartoon picture of me behind the microphone in the driver's seat. <laughs> it's kind of fun. I will, uh, in fact, let me, before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and save this image uh, to my computer, so that way uh, I'll, be able, I'll be able to post it later, because that you guys just got to see that. It's really awesome. Amy sent an email saying, how about mobile darkness? I also like the weird darkness machine. Makes me think of Scooby-Doo Mystery Machine and has the podcast title in it. I'm a over-the-road trucker and love listening while I drive. I'll watch for you out on the road. And uh, Milo the truck cat. And also Amy. Oh, so, so you travel with your cat. All right, Amy. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And as you know, I have a uh, kind of a, a, a soft spot in my heart for truck drivers. My dad was in the trucking industry for most of his career, not as a driver, as a salesperson, but still, I mean, we were surrounded by images of, of semis, uh, like when I was growing up. And of course, we had the, C the CB as well. And uh, my dad was, was pra is practically blind, uh, legally blind without his glasses. And so his handle was Mr. Magoo. <laughs> I thought that was just so cool. He eventually changed it over to Voyager 1, I think, when he got tired of Mr. Magoo. Uh, I never really did get into the CB thing, uh, so I never had to come up with a handle, but it would have been fun. And I, and I saw a meme earlier today that I think is so true. CB lingo is so much cooler than text speak. All right, uh, one of my patrons, Charles, sent me a message. Darren, just a note to say hello. You fill our days with fun stuff to think about and a flood of fascinating people and fascinating worlds. Bless you for your addition, you, to our little California family. Best regards, Charles and Susan. Well, thank you. 
That is really sweet. So, no suggestions for the SUV or anything, just a nice little note from one of my patrons saying that they feel like I'm part of their family. I, I appreciate that, Charles. Thank you so much. Please give uh, your wife, Susan, a huge hug for me. I really appreciate that. Another one of my patrons, Jamie, said, Hi, Darren. Thank you for all you do. I've been listening to you for about two months on iHeartRadio. I found you when I was listening to Crime Junkie. Now I'm an official weirdo. So I, I get another Crime Junkie one. Interesting. I need to contact those guys and thank them. Uh, anyway, moving on with Jamie's uh, message. You get me through my workday. Ten hours a day, five days a week, and four hours on Saturday. My favorite is Fireside Frights and Retro Radio. Keep up the good work. Good luck on the two awards. You got this. Oh, and I'd like to say you should name the excursion the Weird Darkness Mystery Machine or Weirdo Mystery Machine. God bless you and Robin. Signed, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. And also thank you for the blessings for both me and my bride. I, I appreciate that. So, uh, by, speaking of Fireside Frights, we do have another one coming up this Friday. I'm going to be on the road uh, going to Champaign, Illinois to the Dark Horror and History Con, so I'm going to have to pre-record Fireside Frights, but I still hope that I can get it in if I can get rid of this migraine and be able to actually concentrate on the emails that you guys sent. Doing a, a Chamber of Comments is a little bit easier because all the messages are so short and I really don't have to concentrate much. I'm just kind of off the cuff replying to them, but uh, hopefully the, the migraine will go away and I can move on. Um, let's see, Neil sent an email saying, I humbly present the Weird Darkness X Scream Machine. I gotta read that one again. I humbly present the Weird Darkness X Scream Machine. X Scream, X Scream Machine. I like that. Kind of like the live scream that I do every Halloween instead of a live stream. This is the X, instead of X Stream, this is X Scream Machine. The Weird Darkness X Scream Machine. I like that, Neil. <laughs> I think you just came, became one of my favorites. Very, very clever. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see, uh, Carol is uh, one of my patrons, and she sent me a message. Darren, I'm listening to your chamber of comments right now. I have to say I understand your frustration at the people who were complaining about the words used. I do remember you saying why you were keeping the word in the story. Unfortunately, many times the same people who complain about words will also use the words that will be offensive to someone else and don't care. There are podcasts that I have stopped listening to because the profanity was way too much. You may drop a word here and there, but it's relative to the story, not just because you're talking. So know that there are those of us that have thicker skin and are not going to cry because you say something that isn't politically correct. I do love your show. I'm sorry, but I don't have any good ideas for your vehicle's name. Have a good evening. Know that 99% of us really do love everything you do. Thank you, Carol. Th thank you so much. Obviously, you love what I'm doing. You became one of my patrons, and I greatly appreciate that. Uh, you have no idea how, how much that means to me, because you're not only listening every day, you've actually, you're, you're spending your hard-earned money to get the, to, uh, to get the commercial free version, and um, I don't take that lightly. Even though it's just five dollars a month, I mean that's five dollars you could spend on something else, and you could still listen to the show for free elsewhere with the commercials. So, thank you, Carol. I uh, I very much appreciate that, and I also appreciate your comments regarding the content in my show and why I decide to use certain words because the authors used them. So, thank you for that. Uh, and if you have any idea, and if if you're listening and you have no idea what I'm talking about, you'll need to go back to the previous Chamber of Comments, because that's, that's, that's a little too in-depth to get into right here. Another one of my patrons sent me a message. Uh, this is Bareback Bleeka. <laughs> that's, that's their name on Patreon. That, that's, what they, that's how they signed it up. Uh, anyway, uh, I was listening to your August 14th Chamber of Comments episode, and you talked about the suicide email that you received. It makes you normal and compassionate to feel guilty or like you could have done more or sooner, etc. But the truth is, no one's life is in your hands unless you're taking it. it. That's just the facts. Also, in the same episode, you read the message about taking out words and, gosh, it's hard for me to listen sometimes. People are so entitled. They want what they want or they have to tell you they're unhappy, just like you suggested them skipping the episodes they don't approve of. Sometimes I have to skip these episodes of them telling you they don't approve of you. Ugh. And you were correct. There was a warning in the episode. They chose to still listen past that point and be offended. I don't know how you do it. Keep doing what you do. If I don't like it, I skip it. Bam! Problem solved. Oh, and to add to that, I know you don't know us personally, but 
I'm sure many of your weirdos feel the same as I do and are here for you too, buddy. You listen and read a lot of negative, uh, I'll, I'll say crap from people and take on their feelings. Make sure your overflow valve is open and clean. You must remember, you have your own life and problems. You can't take everyone's problems on. Kind of irks me that this person would dump his suicide on you. Just seems selfish to me. And again, I don't really understand emotions, lol, so I can't judge him or her. Well, I'm here for you, Darren. Lastly, your expedition. I've always liked cars named Ramblers. What about the Dark Rambler or Para Rambler? Just throwing it out there. Take care, sir. Your friend, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Um, I really appreciate the encouragement in that. And a couple of really good names there at the end, too. Thank you very much. Let's see. Another Michelle emailed me saying, Weird Darkness Mystery Hunter. I was listening to your new podcast and thought of this. Well, thank you, Michelle. I appreciate the uh, the option or, or the, uh, the idea. Uh, Len says, The Midnight Mover. Chris sent me an email saying, Weird Wagon, Weird Rambler. Love listening every day at work. Take care. Signed, Chris. Another Patreon member, Jim, says, Dark Drive. Uh, let's see here. Gary sent me an email saying, Hello, sir. This is Gary. I just wanted to thank you for choosing my story to dramatize on your podcast. I had just subscribed to Weird Darkness a couple weeks ago, and imagine my surprise when I began to hear my story presented on the podcast. You did a wonderful job with it. It's just as I imagined it as I wrote it. Thank you again. I enjoy your podcast very much. Signed, G.L. Bauman. And uh, by the way, in case you're wondering what that story was, it's called Acts of Vengeance. And just do a search for that in the podcast. You can be able to find it. Thank you for the email, GL. I appreciate that. Really glad you liked my take on it. And I truly appreciate you sending that in and allowing me to share it with my listeners. Uh, I would have shared it in a Fireside Frights episode, but it was a story of fiction. So we made it a Thriller Thursday slash Creepypasta Thursday episode. But either way, thank you very much, Gary. I really appreciate that. And uh, hey, if you have any other stories that you want to want to send my way, I'll be more than happy to uh, give them a look. Got a Patreon member, Florist, sent me this message. I'd like to nominate the Weirdo Wagon as a candidate for the name of your SUV. As for the wording controversy, I agree with you 100%. I completely understand why that word is so destructive. That being said, you provide us with a wonderful show with often very dark subjects. I agree with your sentiment. If people are mature enough to listen to these stories, they should be equally mature enough to disregard said words. Thank you for everything you provide us, Darren. You really are a blessing. Thank you, Forrest. I appreciate that. It's interesting. Most people uh, seem to be landing on my side when it comes to why I use certain words. We're referring to the N-word. Um, not the N-word, but uh, Negro. I think is the word that was used. I might be wrong on that. I, I don't remember if it was that or if it was the actual N-word. Either way, a lot of people have issues with, with that word, but it was part of the original story written by Algernon Blackwood. So it's like a, it's a piece of, of uh, history more than anything else because Algernon Blackwood is very well respected uh, as, a, as a horror writer in history. So that's why I didn't want to touch that. Um, so, but uh, thank, you very, uh, thank you very much, Forrest. I appreciate that. But yeah, so many people are kind of on my side as to why I use those words. But then again, it's because you're listeners and you're already fans. So I'm sure that's why most of you are on my side. I'm guessing if it was to be opened up to the entire public without them knowing who I am, I'd probably have an onslaught of people who uh, would be hating on me and probably canceling me. Uh, let's see here. The next one uh, comes from Max. And the subject is thank you for Cycle of the Werewolf. He says, that has always been one of my favorite Stephen King stories. I love his shorter stories more than his novels. I know, weird coming from a Lovecraft fan. And Silver Bullet would absolutely be in my top 10 favorite King movies, maybe even in the five range. And I hope you get a chance to do more of his stuff. I'd love to hear you do maybe The Langoliers or Grandma, which has a very obvious Lovecraft connection. Well, thank you, Max. I appreciate that. I really did. I, that's one of my favorite books of Stephen King. Well, it's Actually, it's the only book I've read from Stephen King, to tell you the truth, is Cycle of the Werewolf, which was made into the movie Silver Bullet years later. And I just, I'm not really a huge Stephen King fan, but I'm with you. I do like the short stories. The long stories that have been made into the movies, not so much. For some reason, they just really haven't appealed to me. It was fun. 
but it well, it wouldn't really be something that I would choose to go into, but I've always been a fan of werewolves, so I think that's probably why I even gave it an option or gave it a chance reading it when I was a kid. So anyway, um, that being said, I don't know about the Langoliers or Grandma. There are actually licensing issues when it comes to reading stuff for Stephen King, and I took a chance with Cyclo the Werewolf, and I could very well get a cease and desist order sometime soon and have to take it down. I really don't want to. Um, I did look online, and there are some other authors that have also narrated it, um, and they haven't, it's not like a published thing through them either, so I'm thinking maybe they don't care so much about that particular title because it is a short story and it's, it was out so long ago, but uh, we'll see what happens. But anyway, uh, The Langoliers or Grandma, I don't know how long those stories are. I can look into it to see, but I have a feeling uh, the copyright would cause me an issue with that. Uh, Tim sent me an email saying, Hello, Darren. We're thinking about doing a podcast where the kids will host it and have guests come on to discuss different things like how to deal with mental health issues. And I was wondering if you had any recommendations for programs and equipment that we can use. That's uh, Tim. Tim, that... Uh, yeah, I, I do. Uh, in fact, I've created a page with a list of equipment that I use both in the studio and on the road. And um, it, that would that at least give you an idea of what you would need. I mean, you wouldn't have to buy exactly what I have because some of it's pretty expensive. You can go with cheaper versions. Just, you know, like a USB microphone works just fine nowadays. Just plug it into your laptop or your computer. Do not use the internal microphone built into your computer. That just makes you sound like you're in a garage and it sounds awful. So use an external microphone of some kind. By the way, kids talking about mental health, that is a really unique idea. So Godspeed on that endeavor, and once you launch that, let me know about it. I'd love to give it a listen. Dawn sent an email saying, CryptoPod. Crypto brings to mind both crypts and cryptids. Pod brings to mind a cool capsule and the podcast, LOL. Have fun with the name signed Dawn, a.k.a. Mama DDB, who is a huge, by the way, she's a huge, um, uh, what is, what's the word I'm looking for? Huge participant in our Weirdo Watch Parties. She's always in there uh, making comments. So, Mama DDB, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, the, the issue I would have with CryptoPod, I totally see where you're going, and I, I would actually vote for that if it wasn't for the fact that so many people would think that it refers to cryptocurrency, like Bitcoin and stuff like that. If you do a, a search online for crypto, you're almost always going to get the Bitcoin stuff. And so if I was to call it the CryptoPod, people would immediately be thinking my vehicle has something to do with, with Bitcoin or something. But I like, the, I, I like where you were going with that. I totally see that. But, uh, you know, cryptid pod doesn't really have the same, doesn't really roll off the tongue that way. I, but I totally see where you're coming from. I, I, wish, I wish the cryptocurrency didn't have that same name. Uh, Chris sent me an email saying, Hey, Darren, a big fan of the show. Your voice is great. The stories are amazing. I also love how much you dedicate to mental health which is why it's a little weird, not the good kind, that you still say committed suicide instead of died of suicide. A crime is something you commit. Losing a battle to mental illness or extreme uh, despair should not be treated as a crime. Anyways, you keep me company most of the time and the paranormal stuff is my favorite, especially Skinwalker Tales. Thank you for all you do. Big hugs, signed Chris, or Crystal actually. Well, Crystal, um, you know what? I've, I've never had anybody bring that up before. Uh, so I, hmm, I, I thought about it for a, a moment, and I, I do see where you're coming from, but I think saying committed suicide, though, is still perfectly valid. It may not, you may not like the sound of it, but I mean, we use committed when referring to acts of violence, yes, but the word also means to carry out to do, perform, engage in, enact, affect, accomplish, be responsible for, etc. So that being said, the saying died of suicide does sound a bit less accusatory, so it's actually a, a good thought. I'm not sure I'll actually make the change because my brain's already used to saying committed suicide, those words being together. Um, it just kind of comes out naturally that way, but if, if it occurs to me while talking about it, I might very well try it your way and say, died of suicide. Uh, regardless, thank you very much for the email, for the respectful way that you brought that up. I really appreciate that. I, I don't mind hearing from people who 
have an issue with what happens on the podcast so long as they are articulate and come at me with diplomacy and respect. And that's exactly what you did. I really appreciate that, Crystal. Thank you. You can email me anytime with any concerns you have. But also, thank you for those nice words that you ended with, too. That really does. That makes it a lot, lot less painful, too. So thank you very much. And God bless you. Um, I got a Patreon from, uh, let's see, this one comes from, oh, another one from Forrest. He said, Weirdo Wagon. We've, been, we've had a lot of those. Weirdo Wagon. Uh, let's see here. I think that's it for the SUV suggestions. But I do have two more emails that I want to, I want to read. But before I get there, let me go down the list of, of all the, the names that have come in so far, because this is just crazy. We've got the Dark Rider, the Weird Wagon, the Weirdo Wagon, the Weirdo Machine, the Weird Darkness Wagon, or WDW, the Weird Darkness Pod Car, Weird Darkness Terror Plane, like a terraplane type of car from the 30s, the Weird Darkness Ford Exorcism, <laughs> I love that one, the Weirdo Expedition, the Weird TARDIS, the Four Wheel Weirdo, the Wheeled Weirdo, the Weird Darkness Excursion, the Weird Darkness Machine, the Mobile Darkness, Rolling Darkness, Dark Nessie, Marler Mobile, Optimus Grimm, Cryptopod, Dark Drive, Weird Rambler, Dark Rambler, Para Rambler, The Vanishing Hitchhiker, The Midnight Mover, The Weird Darkness Mystery Hunter, The Weird Darkness, The uh, Weird Darkness Extreme Machine, the Weird Darkness Mystery Machine, The Weirdo Mystery Machine, The Weird Darkness Horror Finder, The Dark Cart, Weird Darkness Ghoulish Mystery Machine, Weird Darkness Mystery Investigator, The Darkness Express, The Weirdos Express, The Darkness Roamer, and Dark Roamer. <laughs> Holy cow! Oh my gosh! So I, I went through all of those to see which ones I liked the best. I narrowed it down to four, but I might have to narrow it down to three because I'm not sure I can legally use one of those. The Weirdo Wagon seems to be pretty popular, so I, th that'll be one of the choices in a poll that I put up on the website at WeirdDarkness.com. I'm actually going to be placing it in my on, for my patrons, but I'm going to set it for public so anybody can vote on it. So if you, you, you can find the link to it at WeirdDarkness.com, but the Weirdo Wagon will be one of the choices. The Weird Darkness Ford Exorcism, I absolutely love. However, I think because it has the brand name Ford in it, in order, because it's not going to make any sense if you just call it the Weird Darkness Exorcism, uh, the Ford Exorcism kind of it it fits it and makes it it makes the, the the play on words complete. But I don't know if I could use Ford and not get sued. So <laughs> I love the name, I really do, but I don't think I can put that in as one of my final final options. So clever, so clever, but I just I can't use that as as one of my my final options. Uh, the Weird Darkness Machine, which I've been using quite a bit. That's why I was the original name for it, which I still like. But uh, And then also the Weird Darkness Extreme Machine, which is also just amazingly creative. So, all right, so the three that I'm going to go with then, just so you all know, we can go with the Weird Darkness Extreme Machine, the Weird Darkness Machine, or the Weirdo Wagon. Those are the three that I've finally narrowed it down to. I will have the link on uh, WeirdDarkness.com so you can click on that and take the poll and let me know which one you think should be the name for the Weird Darkness SUV because just saying SUV is just sticking boring so we need a name for it. So Weird Darkness X Scream Machine, the Weird Darkness Machine, or the Weirdo Machine. All right, so all right, I'm moving on. I got two more emails that have nothing to do with the SUV so I'll, I'll go to those. Uh, this one comes from Francine, and she says, Good afternoon, Darren. I would love to hear your take on the theory that H.H. Holmes could possibly have been Jack the Ripper. There's an interesting show called American Ripper that goes into the possibility. Have a great day. Your podcasts are wickedly awesome. Thanks for being weird like me. Sincerely, Francine. Okay, well, Francine, um, I actually did a, uh, an episode on H.H. Holmes and... Uh, also, and I've also done, of course, episodes on Jack the Ripper, and the connection has been made a couple of times within the podcast. If you're asking me specifically whether I believe it, I really don't. I, I don't think so. Uh, and the only reason I say that is because H. H. Holmes would have had to have been so busy with what he was doing in the states 
that I don't think he'd be, I, I don't know. You know, I, it, it would depend on the dates and I, I don't have those dates here in front of me, so I really don't know. It's an interesting theory. I think it's one of those things that's just fun to think about, but we've got so many evil people in the world, it really shouldn't be too surprising that we'd have a serial killer both in England and in America at around the same time. So just because they're happening, it's just a coincidence that they're both happening at the same time. It doesn't have to be the same person. In fact, if we really knew what was going on in the world right now, we would probably be terrified as to how many serial killers are out there doing their thing and we just aren't connecting them with, with other stuff. So, And finally, I wanted to end with this one. This one almost made me cry when I was uh, reading it. And for those of you who are not big fans of Church of the Undead, this might not be your thing but, because this definitely comes from a spiritual uh, aspect, but I just I got to share it with you. It's an email from Laura. She says, Hi there, Darren. I wanted to tell you the impact you've had on me. This might be a TLDR, LOL. I'm a Christian and a badly fallen one at that, but aren't we all? When everything shut down in 2020, all our services were online. It was very easy to skip church. It was online. I could watch it whenever I wanted. After everything started getting back to normal, I found every excuse in the book to not go to church. When I finally did start going back to church, I was starting to lean towards a much larger church because there were no kids my uh, there were no kids my kids' age at our current church. I've been there almost 20 years, and they're literally my family. That's not blood, and their youth group was really hard to get to in the middle of the week. Enter in the attendance at the mega church. No accountability. No one knew I was there, so I quit going again. I promised myself I'd go if this thing was done or if that project was complete. Excuses, excuses. Enter in your podcast. I love the weird, unexplained, mysterious, and even true crime. I was listening to an inferior podcast that was so woke I would spend most of my time listening just yelling at them in my head. Cue the search for a new podcast. I randomly found yours and am completely hooked. The first time I heard you use scripture, though, I was shocked. Who is this guy and why is he using scripture? Then I heard your episode on demons and the Bible. And let me tell you, I whipped out my Bible and was absolutely stunned when this guy with an awesome podcast was using scripture in context. I was so excited. Then your Church of the Undead episodes come on, and I found myself stopping whatever I was doing to just focus on your message. I went back to my old church today and was stunned at how many of my beautiful family members were there to tackle me with hugs. I missed them so much. I missed worshiping God with all my heart and singing praises to my Creator. I missed taking communion with my church family. I missed all of it. Darren, I truly believe that this is your God-given ministry. It is an amazing one at that. You have a super fun podcast that I just can't get enough of and a wonderful message at the end of every episode. I have never recommended a podcast as much as this one. I tell everyone about it. Last but not least, your support of mental health. I've never been clinically diagnosed with depression, but I do have something. Most of my family does. I'm just the only one who ever did anything about it. It was around the time of Andrea Yates, and I had my own two small children at home. My issue was I would fly off the handle for any little thing, and I mean rage, throwing things, screaming, all of it. There was one night when I was giving the kids a bath and it just hit me that someday I'm going to go too far and hurt one of my kids. I made a doctor appointment the very next day and got on some medication for anti-anxiety, anti-depression. It has made such a difference in my life. I thank God that my kiddos don't remember those days of an insane mom. It also saved my marriage. My husband is a saint for putting up with my shenanigans for so long. I personally believe everyone in the world needs a therapist. They're just the best. I preach mental health right along with you. When someone sheepishly tells me they're on meds, I praise them for recognizing the need for help. Thank you from an adoring fan, Laura. Thank you, Laura. I, I, um, I'm humbled. I, I really am. And I, I've read that before, and it still touches me reading it again for everybody else to hear. 
that is the old, that is the biggest compliment I think I could ever receive. That after listening to the podcast, you decided that you wanted to try church again, and that you're going, and that you're getting something out of it, and that you're you're praising God again. That's that is amazing, and it's it's so strange that you would get that out of a podcast that talks about true crime and ghosts and goblins and werewolves and Bigfoot and all that other other strange, dark, macabre stuff. So, but uh, and I wouldn't I would never have thought that just ending the podcast with a single Bible verse would be such a big deal. I remember when I first started doing that and I really had my reservations about it because I wasn't sure how people were going to react to it. I wanted to bring out, well, exactly as I say at the end of each episode, now that we're coming out of the darkness, I want to bring you a little light. I wanted to leave people on a bit of a lighter note so they're not walking away from the podcast after listening still with that dark spirit on them. So that's why I started adding the Bible verses and I've specifically been trying to look for verses that are uplifting that can even be applied to those who don't believe in the Bible, almost like just parables or uh, morality tales, you know? Uh, which is also another reason why I started adding the final thought after the verses, because I could find other things that are still uplifting and, and uh, aren't necessarily Christian. But the Bible verses are still there, and I really just wanted to expand on that, but I wasn't sure how people were going to react. And at the, in the beginning, I did have a lot of people, especially if you look at some of the early reviews um, on Apple Podcasts or iTunes, you'll see a lot of people complaining about being proselytized to, that I was trying to save them, that I'm, uh, that I'm extreme right wing <laughs> because I used to, uh, yeah, never mind the fact that, you know what, Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, Independents, you know, they all go to church. I mean, you, I don't understand the whole right wing thing, but uh, some people just had such a hard time with it. But most of you show your appreciation and you emailed me and said that you liked it, just like you've done here, Laura. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. This actually comes up with something I'm talking to my patrons about because I'm asking them about the Church of the Undead. It's a separate podcast, by the way. For those of you who don't know what Church of the Undead is, it is not part of, it's it's a, um, related to Weird Darkness, but it's not in the Weird Darkness podcast. Once in a while, I'll throw a Church of the Undead episode inside the Weird Darkness podcast because I think it fits for everybody, not just for those who are looking for a Christian message. But for the most part, it is a separate podcasts. Just look for Church of the Undead wherever you listen to your podcasts, or you can click on Church of the Undead on the Weird Darkness website and you can find it there. So that's what she's referring to. So Andrea, I don't know if you're listening to Church of the Undead every day of the week or not, because I do post seven days a week there, but um, I'm really glad that it's that it's helped you. And, and Church of the Undead itself, of course, was an experiment. And it's still very small. Um, I think maybe I get maybe a thousand downloads a month maybe with that and that's after posting every single day so i got a very small congregation over there but i still enjoy putting out that content and i'm glad some people such as yourself are getting something out of it so thank you laura and thank you to everybody who's been sending in the emails thank you for all the suggestions for the vehicle again i'm going to post it on the website at weirddarkness.com the poll for the suv what are we going to name it your three final options are the Weird Darkness Extreme Machine, the Weird Darkness Machine, or the Weirdo Wagon. All right? You can find that at WeirdDarkness.com. And if you want to email me, it's easy to do. Just, just send me an email. Darren, D-A-R-R-E-N, at WeirdDarkness.com. Or if you want to send in an actual story of something that's happened to you or somebody you know, you can go to the website and click on Tell Your Story, and you can do something a bit more official. Thanks a lot, weirdos. I really appreciate it. God bless you, and I will see you in the podcast.